When you're in a high stress moment, like presenting at an important client meeting, everyone is staring at you, every word counts, the stakes are high, and someone asks you a question and suddenly you can't remember the most critical fact. Have you experienced something like this? I have. Fortunately, your memory can be significantly improved, even when stress derails it. Memory is about increased new connections between neurons. There are a few simple strategies to make those new connections stick. I'll come to them in a minute, but let's start with defining the two types of memory, short-term and long-term memory. Short-term or working memory guides decision-making and it lasts for about 20 seconds. If your brain considers the working memory facts significantly important, it converts them into a long-term memory. This conversion happens in the hippocampus. The long-term factual memories are stored in the cortex and they last for hours to years depending on how repeatedly the new connections are consolidated. An emotional or traumatic memory on the other hand is converted into long-term memory via the amygdala rather than via the hippocampus. This amygdala emotion memory pathway results in a stronger memory than via the hippocampus. And, and that's why we remember emotion and negative memories more intensely than factual memories. How does memory work? The underlying mechanism was discovered by Eric Kandel, who was awarded the Nobel Prize in 2000 for the amazing revelations. The overall mechanism is that when neurons fire together, they get wired together. How that happens is the excitatory neurochemical glutamate activates receptors called NMDA, and they trigger the growth of new proteins that wires the new memory connections together. The brain can store huge amounts, petabytes of memory. However, memory recall in real time of that information is limited. For example, most people can recall seven numbers. Factual memory recall is dependent on your genetics, your ability to focus, and frankly, how well you've trained yourself to remember that information. So what are the 10 most effective ways to boost your memory? Discover the ones that work best for you, and let's go through them. Chunking. Group the information you want to remember in groups of three. Train this with the memory sequence in total brain. Rhymes. Enhance chunking memory further by linking those numbers or facts with rhyme and with visual images. Train this with memory sequence as well. Order. The first and the last items are easiest to remember. The middle content in a list of facts is hardest to remember. So pay extra attention to the things in the middle. Train this with fact lists that you need to remember. Associations. Adding any association to the information will help with memory recall. Train the strategy with faces and names. Patterns. The brain is a pattern generating system. So use your brain's inherent spatial ability to see the big picture pattern and how the details fill into that pattern. By associating the pattern with the aligned detail makes both easier to remember. Train this using memory maze. Acronyms. Construct the first letter of each fact to be remembered into a vivid, memorable word. We remember acronyms longer when the word has a meaning to us. Train this strategy using word lists. Narrative. Stories engage us more than anything and, and we remember them more seamlessly than, than dry facts. So associations of key facts with any familiar object objects in a scene such as your as your bedroom 
allows you to connect them into a story that you're more likely to remember. This room association narrative technique was invented by the Greeks 2000 years ago. Train it when you give presentations or speeches and you do not want to read them from notes or using a PowerPoint presentation. Write it down and say it. More than one way of brain activation of the memory means more ways to wire the neural networks of the new memory. This is relevant for all memory training. Novelty. The brain remembers novelty more than perfunctory information. So add novelty to associations, narrative, or acronyms. This is relevant for all memory training. And let's end off with the example with which we started. Stress reduction. Stress hormones such as cortisol derails memory and learning. Use breath training and positive visualization techniques to reduce stress in the moment and increase memory recall. Train this with my calm beat and breath techniques. Discover through trial and error which of these 10 strategies work best for you and in what situations. Whatever strategies you choose, memory is also boosted by focused repetition of the key information. And by not interrupting the short-term to long-term consolidation pathway with alcohol or any mind-altering substance or stress when you've just learned the new information. To make your memory boosting habit mostly sticky, regularly ask yourselves, what was the best example in which my new memory habit was useful in my daily life.